Hello everyone, my name is Korazar, and welcome back to the Incomplete Guide to Star Sector. We are here, it's a little bit after last time we left off, a couple months I think. Hello Big Bounty. Oh no, no 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 no. No, keep your money. <laughs> keep that money. Anyway, speaking of bounties, I went out and I did a couple little bounties. I did a... A bounty worth about 200k up in here, a bounty worth about 240 up in here, and I made a little bit of delivery, and it was in this bounty that I happened to catch a new ship. We have our very first onslaught. These are pretty fun ships. They are extremely powerful in the right hands and with the right build. Although they are, once again, they're low tech, so they're typically overfluxed, kind of no matter what you do. That's okay, because it is a big, tough ship with tons and tons of armor to rival that of the Legion. In fact, the Legion also has heavy armor, so yes, it has just about 300 armor more than the Legion, which is a pretty, pretty good amount. But it has weapon mounts, too. So, okay, so it has 100 more than Legion. Whatever. Anyway, I'm just dragging this around with me because I just picked it up and I haven't stopped back at home yet, which is where I dropped off our new Apogee that we got in the last episode. And speaking of ships, we have a couple new names for a couple of our ships. We have, if I can find... Ah, you. There you are. So we have this Atropos that has been the name of our Aurora for a while. And we have a couple new names... I am going to look those up real quick because I don't have them off the top of my head. But we are going to name you the LMC Australis. Australis. Australis? Because if you've heard of the Aurora Borealis, well, there's also the Aurora Australis, and those are the basically southern lights, essentially is what they are. And then we also have a name for our Odyssey, which has actually been a long time coming. I kind of forgot to ask you guys for names. And whoopsie, <laughs> that happens sometimes. And let's take a look at the name I have for you. So for the Odyssey, <laughs> we have the Avant-Garde. I'm guessing it is because it is a statement on how this thing looks. Uh, oops. There we go. And these names are courtesy of Vifdicted? V-I-F-V-D-C-T-C-R. What is that? V-I-F-F-V-D-T-C-E-D. -F -F -E that is not a pronounceable name. I'm sorry, sir or madam, or whatever outsider in between. That's a tough one to pronounce. <laughs> so they gave us the Australis, and Lewis Ed GM gave us the Avant-Garde for the Odyssey. So we are looking for actually a good number of names here. Let's see. We have two Eradicators. We have an Eagle of the... 14th battle group type. We have a Heron. We have a Drover. We have an Enforcer. Two more Tempests. A Brawler. A Monitor. An Afflictor. A Shade. Two Omens. Revenant. Atlas. What is this? Phaeton. A Phantom. A Scarab. And I think those are the big names that I'm looking for, because we're probably not going to keep these guys in our fleet once they are patched up. But if you want to name them, go for it. Just make sure you tell me what ship you want to name in your comments so that I know which one to apply it to. Anyway, today, getting back on track after naming, we are here to hopefully finish out the Galatia Academy quest line. So we have been told to come back. After talking to High Hegemon Dowd in the last episode, Baird taps at her desk console. 
With the gate scans completed and Dowd's assurance that the hegemony will not interfere, we may proceed to the implementation phase. Phase. I'm Sean Connery. The provost allows herself a small smile as he turns to you. In s this is Scylla's moment, of course. Let me link her in. Provost Baird, Captain Corazar, Corus greets you. Explain the Janus device, Baird says, for the captain here. She looks nervous. The prototype device, she begins, yes. In the, um, broad strokes to scan for the gate aperture, we direct a self-modifying phase hyperwave pulse which causes a resonation in lower dimensions which... She looks up from the protected schematic and notices she's losing her, losing her audience. Let's skip ahead to the application section. The schematics flicker through several labyrinthine arrangements and settle on an action flowchart. Here we are. The principle of the Janus device is similar to the scanner, but far more energetic. By tuning the pulse to the unique resonant signature of a particular gate aperture, one might theoretically activate that link. A second input would then target a known gate egress, though avoiding destructive interference in the Calibi Yaw manifold is tricky. So this would reopen the gate network. Baird cuts in. Not exactly. Thank you for your attention to detail, Scylla, but if I may summarize, at this level of energy input, a temporary link should be created between two gates. The probe gets a distant look. Then, with sufficient energy and stable resonance injected into the entire gate system, this time Carew's interrupts. But the data, it shows that the system, the resonance, it's fundamentally chaotic. There are clearly some other, some factors we're seeing results the model doesn't account for, and at higher magnitudes, the results could be, be... She searches for words, some way to bind chaos and destruction into quantified language. That's enough, academation, Barrett says forcefully. The captain is a highly skilled professional and doesn't need to hear all of this to do their job. Academation, what exactly does chaotic mean in this context? Baird turns to you, leaving Carew's cowed. Academation Carew's will return to, to work refining the details as more data is gathered. As a great man once said, technological advance is an inherently iterative process. Captain, she says, the first prototype Janus device is being transferred to your fleet. Test it on a gate manifold you may have scanned. Record everything with your sensor suite and the modified instructions we have provided. This may be the most important experiment in the history of the Persian sector. Now, she did say one that we scanned, but the quest is to do it on an uninhabited system. I don't know why this mismatch here. The manifold, of course. Carew speaks up one last time. Just just don't use it in an inhabited system. Like the incident when Kalachor, the hegemony, it wouldn't be good. Thank you, Baird says acidly, for the reminder, academician. The provost turns to you. Obviously, we shall not repeat my predecessor's mistake. Test this somewhere quiet. She turns from the hollow display for a dismissal. I wait your results, Captain. Baird terminates the comms. So... At this point, if we talk to Scylla, we can ask her if we should be worried. Hello, Captain. I'm so sorry I'm so busy. What is it you need? <laughs> Several emotions cross Carusa's face all at once. Um, Captain, all sciences... She sighs. No, I can't do this. What's going on? Look, the provost told me what to tell you and what not to tell you. She was very clear about her objections to my attitude, about questioning her leadership. And here I am at the Galatia Academy. The hegemony still has a warrant out for my arrest. To say nothing of the League, or, let help me, the Pathers. She's got me, Carew says. She takes another deep breath before looking back into the hollow display. I wouldn't send you out with this prototype if I thought for sure it was a, a, a death trap or something. That's all I can say. She looks down and reaches to terminate the comm link, hesitates. And, um, good luck? Okay, so off we go. So it's important to note that this could be a very costly endeavor. We're going to go and attempt to open a gate. I'm going to go up here and just take a quick peek at any officers, repair anything, get any goods. Sure. Double sure. And the reason is that we are not quite at the end of this quest line yet. And 
this first test will fail. So this is your first time. Spoiler, sorry. This is going to fail, and it's going to... Um, well, you'll see. But we're going to drop off our ships, most of them, at Corvus here, because it's pretty quick. Let's see. Corvus ought to be right here. We can just drop at the jump point. Why not? Because what's going to happen is that it's going to reduce our ship's hit points and combat readiness to next to zero across the entire fleet. So make sure you don't have many of them with you. So we're going to basically leave uh, just about everything. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And we're going to bring probably just... Let's see. Let's do that. We will leave all of this cargo here. Dump you, dump you. All of you get to go. Okay, good. So it doesn't lose their thing. Basically all of you. And let's leave like a couple of you. Take you, just in case. Okay, so how far can we fly on just this? Oh, we can go everywhere, okay. Let's also leave you then. And let's see how far we can get now. If I can ever get to the right tab. Neat. Okay, now how far can we go? Still the entire map, okay. So we're gonna go down to the gate that we have down in one of these systems here. Not that one, apparently. The you? Nope. There's a gate down on one of these guys somewhere here. Here you are. And we're going to use this gate. And we're taking as few ships as possible so that we don't have to repair all of our ships and spend literally hundreds of thousands of credits doing it. I kind of wish that someone, maybe Scylla or maybe Gargoyle, would interject during that and... Or maybe even reach out to you via the comms. Uh, and sort of be like, hey you might want to go and dish your ship somewhere because otherwise you're going to have a bad time and it's going to cost you a ton of money. So let's go and do that. Get everything dumped off here. Yeah, we'll just leave a couple of you. Take you. Okay, so we are full of everything. Let's go drop off these. There we go. And now we're very efficient. And although we're doing this, I do recommend you save before you go anywhere. Because just in case bad things come out and find you. But because we're such a small fleet now, we should be able to typically disengage from most fights. So let's get here, turn off this. And we have a phase ship with us, which means that basically nothing can see us right now. We have a tiny, tiny sensor profile. Medium warning beacon. Okay, that should be fun. Let's pop in here at the fringe jump point. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll turn off our go fast button, and we're just going to zip up here. I don't want to turn on our go fast button because then we will be pretty visible. Okay, and here we are at the gate. We'll have to scan the gate first. Boop. And then we can use the Janus prototype on the gate. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second just to note that there really isn't anything you can do to avoid this explosion. If you are in the sector when this gate blows up, then you get your damage. You, you get your ships pretty well beat up. And even if you transverse jump the moment you get back out of the dialogue, it won't be enough to get you out in time. So you're going to have to just eat the damage and then, well, leave. So let's use the prototype on the gate. 
you know immediately that something is wrong. The hyperspace manifold display lights up with garish colors and violent whirls and jags. The representation's color key glitching out on parameters beyond any anticipated scale. You hear a discordant tone, the hyperspace storm alarm, weirdly sounded here in normal space, and something else. Echoing somewhere which exists only in your mind, like a wail of pain. Your census officer shouts a warning, Wavefront approaching! And loop. Boom! Okay. So we get the warning that we are in really rough repair. And you will see that we have no combat readiness, and we've taken a good chunk of damage. Now, luckily, we have enough supplies to finish our repairs. We are going to hang out here. Oh, this actually has not is not blinking for some reason. So let's go ahead, and we are going to jump out because the gates here, or rather the Hyperspace points won't actually let us out. So we have to transverse jump. And I think that does stabilize after a couple months, so you can come back in and out eventually, just not right now. So let's go, and we are going to save. And we're going to run back up to Corvus, pick up our ships, and then we will head out. Let's go to let's go directly there. In we go. Transponder on. So there, that's how you do that part of the quest. Make sure you pick up your ships and get all of your officers back on. I'm going to do that here real quick, and then I'll bring you back, because I don't want to make you wait while I fiddle with everybody here. But I'll see you when we are back over at Galatia and ready to report and just maybe slap any to Baird. All right, folks, here we are once again in Galatia. Let's go storm into her room. The station comms connect to the office of the provost with no delay, and your navigation officer forwards a link to your command interface. She was waiting. Tell me what happened. Their tone is cold as a vacuum. Caruz is already on the link, looking paler than usual. You get this distinct feeling that the provost knows very well what happened. You tell me what happened. I could have been killed by that thing. But you weren't. You're a survivor, Captain, which is why you're ideal for this work. Besides, she says too casually, making history is a dangerous career choice, the one you chose. Baird turns to Carews. Academician, when will the next iteration of the prototype be completed? I don't, she starts. We need more time. Academician, Baird begins, a warning. Kuros interrupts. I'm a theoretician, not an engineer. This isn't a matter of just fitting pipes or, or aligning agraph plates. What we're doing is completely new, and, and our engineering process is primitive. We are scientists trying to assemble the equivalent of, of, of a new hyperdrive in a teaching workshop. Not only are the facilities insufficient, the project application falls outside my expertise. Bayer visibly calms herself, but beneath her collected facade, something seethes. You do realize, the provost says, that I am holding several hegemony ministries at bay. They're rearing to storm and purge the Galatia Academy again. All I have on my side are the good graces of the hive scum hegemon Baikal Dowd, and that, that, is only held up by the sector-shattering promise of what the results of this project would mean. If I don't get results, the lucky ones will live out their days in some oubliette near the core of Quaddle. I'm sorry you're having trouble, she says without a trace of apology, but I am accommodating the conditions and circumstances have provided. So, by all means, Scylla, take your time, Baird finishes with icy sarcasm. Carew starts like she wants to speak. What, Baird says, is it? I need Lissa Zal, Carew says quietly. Who, says Baird, her patience for excuses at an end. A friend, an engineer, 
the best hardware wizard I know, I've ever known. Except she's, um, in trouble. It's a long story, but when we knew each other back on Westerness, there was... Baird interrupts the backstory. Captain Corazar, get Corazar's friend if she thinks that'll help. Do whatever it takes, she says. Bribe, blackmail, kill. I do not care. Be smart and be quiet about it. If we get a new prototype before you find this Alyssa Zal character, we'll try that route. If not, carry on. I don't want to know the details because I do not care. Academician Silla Caruse. The provost's withering attention shifts like a pulsar beam. I don't want to hear a single non-actionable complaint until you have a new Janus prototype ready to deploy. Captain Kurazar will run any of your little errands. Now, the provost concludes, I have a meeting with a very prickly hegemony inspector, and we're both going to pretend that we know nothing about what just happened out there. Both of you get off my comms. The link terminates. So we can go talk to Scylla and find out more about Scylla or about Alyssa. So I'm going to just sort of click through these and let you pause to read them. Okay, so with that, a lot of text, walls and walls of text here, we need to go and extract Elissa Zhao from Warlord Kanta's den. And that, I think we visited there once a handful of episodes ago, but we have a couple options here. We can either rush in and storm the place, but if we do, we're going to earn her wrath. And what that will do is that will actually put an additional multiplier on the pirate activity around your colonies. And it's permanent until you go in and pay her off to stop it. Or we could, of course, come in here and offer her something. Kanta isn't particularly stable, as you'll see. Slide on into these DMs here. Turn this thing off. Here we go. So, we can, of course, do the usual check the bar, check con directory, and trade goods. Since our transponder is off, we can, of course, buy things on the black market. But things are pricey here, although Kanta's Den typically has pretty cheap drugs, and a couple other odds and ends. But the markets are weirdly stable all of a sudden. Anyway, let's pop in here. So we can just do the raid. This will really, really annoy Kanta. Or we can go and talk. So I'm going to once again click through these since I've been doing a lot of reading and I figure you guys want to see some more progress, so let's go ahead and I'm going to send the digital token. Go ahead and read that. Ah, we're family, of course. <laughs> and we'll take a shuttle. Your boss already gave me the go-ahead. Shall we comms them about the delay? As they give us some trouble. They back down and we get to dock. This place is full of people that don't like us very much. Let's keep on walking.
And now we meet Kanta. Check out that mask. Yep, people who are very mentally stable wear masks like that and sit on thrones in pirate places. Submit before Kanta. Let's see. Let's do... Let's stand. A stander, she says. And that seems to have earned her uh, favor, which is pretty cool. And we meet Wyatt Sidonia. So what, what Gargoyle gave us was not just a cyber key, but basically like digital proof that we killed or retrieved the wreckage or data from someone that was related to Kanta. Yes, yeah, so we want to we want to get Elizabeth out, and she wants us to bring back Loke. Now we met Loke a while back when we were sent to. I think it was here in Magic. We went to the Tritachion place, in a warehouse where Gargoyle had us pick something up, and Loke was the guy that led us back to the place. He was kind of weird and didn't really talk much. And. Loke is being held by a man named Cotton in the Ludic Path. So, yep, so we're going to go to Epiphany, Epiphany in Al Jabbar. It's a deal. And the other pirates don't like us because we were given priority contact. So. Let's get going over to basically. Yeah, Algebar. Here we go. Okay, here we are. And their fleets are pretty small, so they're not going to bother us too much. And we have our options. We can just prepare raid to get them out. Or, if you don't want to spend those resources and annoy the pathers, you can, of course, just go down to the bar and ask around about Brother Cotton. So we get them to back down, and we're going to wait here. We are told that we need to go to the back room. And here we meet Brother Livewell Cotton. We'll shake his hand, why not? We can be civil. Despite hired killers coming for you, you meet me with T. Why? And he also knows why we're here. This seems uncharacteristically nonviolent. 
And of course he claims, oh, we're actually a of peace. Yeah, okay. All right, buddy. So what do you want with the Loke clone if he's so ungodly? So on Simos, Loke was some kind of like warlord, as I recall, in the history of the game. So what are you going to do with this clone? And I want to take it back. And he gives it to us. Unexpected. Yes, indeed. And he leaves us alone. And we'll return to orbit. And that is the super easy storyline way to get Loke without too much trouble. Actually, without any trouble. And I personally highly recommend it. Because if you do the Alyssa Zal raid, it kind of puts your colonies in a bit of a lurch for a while. And if you raid the Pathers, you don't really get to form the relationship with Cotton, which isn't super important, but it is kind of an interesting little thing. Oh, and we're back at war with the Persian League. Go figure. Someday we'll be able to ditch our contract with Tritachion and not worry about all these interfactional wars so much. Let's get back up in here to Kanta's den. Alright, let's just risk the asteroids for a moment. There we go. Your nav officer calls your attention to the bridge display of the local volume. What passes for traffic control around Kanta's den appears to be non-operational. A comms request blinks suddenly. So, let's see. And we will indeed return Loke. Good, good. Now send me Zal. And now she double crosses us saying, Ah, I think I want something more out of you. And that wasn't part of the deal. And she has stealth mines arming Oh dear. And Kanta's going to teach us a lesson. But it seems that Zal may have broken out of her cell all on her own. And Zal happens to already be here. Bring her aboard. And we have two options. We can either throw them out the airlock without a helmet or with a helmet. I think if you throw them out without a helmet, you also earn Kanta's Wrath. So we're going to give him a helmet. And off we go. And we are going to zip over to the magic gate because Alyssa Zhao has been working on running the calculations that Cargo has sent her, and she thinks that she has a bit of a device that can help us get out of here using this gate. Zhao, how do I know this isn't going to explode on me again? So Silo is the one sending her information, not, not Gargoyle. And we learn that they purposely held back the working device. So she's kind of the one. <laughs> yeah, great plan. You almost blew me up before. <laughs> and there, let's activate and let's go. And once you do that, you will get a map of the whole sector. And you'll be able to see that up here will be the gates you have scanned. Now, I don't think, yeah, so they, we know of gates in a couple other places here. They don't show up at all because we haven't scanned them. And so you don't get to, you don't really get visibility of gates that you haven't scanned, unfortunately. But 
the really cool thing is that one, it's instantaneous transport, and two, one, it'll tell you how much fuel it takes to get there. And you'll see, if you hover over it, it says 407 fuel. That's if we were to fly there, but look down here, it only takes 204. So you are cutting your fuel use in half by using these gates. So whenever possible, I really do highly recommend using these gates. And we go through, and now we're here. Look at that. There's even a little twinkly sound whenever the gates are active and you're inside them. Probably hard to hear on YouTube given that I also turned the volume down so you guys aren't deafened by the music and all the crazy noises. And this part I will read since we are getting to the very end of this part of the quest. Captain Corazar, Baird says, we observed your fleet come through the gate. It was magnificent. She takes a deep breath, looking up and away from a moment, then back to you. History has leapt forward for the first time in 200 cycles. Scylla, the provost says suddenly, she should hear this so she knows why I had to do all that I did. I'll link her in. Karius joins the call, alert and expectant. Captain, she says, and uh, provost, we've all been watching the feeds and I've been in contact with Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. The provost raises an eyebrow. Prompted, Karus explains, Alyssa built a working genius device and gave it to the captain. She's brought us the full schematics. I should like to meet this Alyssa, Zal, the provost says evenly. Hello, provost, Zal says. Finally we speak. I've heard so, so much about you. It is a small thing, but you watch as Barrett suppresses first shock, then a flash of anger at her comms being joined without invitation. Alyssa Zal, Baird says. You can almost feel her judging through the comm link. This is all very surprising, she says, off balance. Academician Karuz. Zal, we have much to discuss, but first get those schematics to the hyperspace labs. And Captain, the provost addresses you now, if you would come directly to my office. We ought not discuss details of the next stage on comms. You take your shuttle to the Galatia Academy. Alyssa Zal sits across me, smiling to herself. Is it Caruse? Zal rolls her eyes at you and fails to suppress a smile. You enter Provost Barrett's office and she greets you with uncharacteristic warmth. Come in, come in. Make yourself comfortable, she says. You know a bottle of something rare and four crystal glasses on her desk. She taps at her console interface. I wanted to show you this before the announcement went public. With, she adds with sarcastic reverence, approval from the high hegemon. With a flicker, the holog projector beams an image into the large central volume of the office. Your flagship triumphantly exiting a gate, drive a glow, hyperspace bubble rendered in visible EM as a victorious golden aura. And this little show is only the first step, Captain. A link between two gates is momentous, but it means that so much more is possible. If we can open one gate, then we can scale that technology to open more. It will take nearly unimaginable energy and the resources of a sector-spanning empire. Baird brings her hands together, staring at the hollow, and taps her fingers as if to let off excess energy. Though the factions of the sector are weak, the bones of the domain are scattered all around us. Academician Simisola has located a derelict coronal tap, which could provide the energy required to, theoretically mind, open permanent links in the gate network. And if what Caruza's theories imply are true... The provost's attention returns to the world around her. Where is Scylla? She was to report here after securing the schematics. She taps a key on her desk console, a touch of annoyance in her voice. Sebastian, have Caruz and... Yes, and Zal. Have them sent in. She shakes her head and gives you a see-what-we-must-deal-with look. As she turns away, the comms unit chimes. She turns back. What is it, Alvis? Is she on the station or not? Stop stammering. It's a simple yes or no question. I see. She taps at the comms, the triumph draining from her expression. Security. Find me Academician Scylla Caruse and her... And Alyssa Zal. Yes, immediately. Top priority. Another tap. And give me that insipid hacker. 
Yes, I mean Gargoyle. No, just on comms. We'll sneak a glass of the victory of the spirit while we still can. <laughs> With Baird's attention thoroughly and increasingly furiously focused elsewhere, you pour yourself a glass, sample the fumes, and sip. Some kind of brandy. Even tied, judging by the label, a stylized arc of solar mirrors over a celestial orb. A fine vintage, subtle, powerful, unexpected. You're beginning to suspect this might be the highlight of the rest of this day. Gargoyle's face appears, protected over the expens expansive desk. Where are they? Baird demands. By Lud's Seven Hells, I will sell you piece by piece of Tritike if you lie to me. The hacker goes very still staring at the hissing crack in a bulkhead threatening to collapse into a vacuum. I do not know, Gargoyle says deliberately. I did not assist them in... in some scheme. Though perhaps I did, though they never said it was their intention. I simply provided tools they requested. Codes. Programs. Advice. So you helped them, Baird shouts. For the protection I provided, asking the High Hegemon himself to overlook your crimes, you repay me with this treachery? Gargoyle holds up a hand. No, you... Look, I admit I suspected something, but I didn't ask. You gave me explicit instructions to fulfill any request, anything, made by Scylla. You can tell the hacker is pressing an impish smile. I have the recording. Do anything Karu says, you said. And I don't want you to ask any more inane questions. I believe those were exact words. Baird slams her hand on the console, terminating the link. Her personal comms chime, then chimes again. She picks it up. Speak. She listens for a moment, then clicks off the comms without replying. Her hand trembling, she removes her spectacles, and you hear a small snap. She turns away, body rigid. Have you a knife for me too, Captain? Baird stares out the window, broken spectacles dangling from her hand. An opened gate, your, feet, your fleet poised triumphant in flight from the uh, cascading hyper vortices of its great maw, spins slowly and silently from the hollow projector. I'm going to say this. I actually haven't seen this option before, and I don't know if I just overlooked it. Heh. <laughs> I guess not the time. Don't waste my air on sentiment, Baird spits. You are clearly not the foremost hyperspace theoretician in the Persian sector. History doesn't always turn out the way you expected. No, she answers, gazing out the window. Well, more mercenaries. Let's get paid. She sighs. Sebastian, she says wearily. We'll handle it. And I'm going to leave it. I think saying any more will really just annoy her. So, bingo bango. But we get to keep the dance device. Let's see. The heavy wooden doors give it your touch, and you step through, surprising the guards in mirror-faced helms. The waiting room of the courtiers eyes you spitefully. What business does some upstart rocket jockey have that's more important than securing their legacy? You step through the airlock doors into the shuttle bay, the very stars at your fingertips. And that is the completion for now of the Galatia Academy quest. Uh, there is, I don't believe there's any indication, but there is probably some speculation on possibly more. I think it'd be really cool if we could go and track down Karoos and Zal and either team up or betray them and capture them and bring them back in or something. That could be really neat. But yes, that is currently the main, biggest main quest of the game. Basically complete. Now, there is still plenty to do, and so I would enjoy it greatly if you'd all rejoin me next episode as we continue our exploration of the sector. Now that we have access to these gates, we have the ability to essentially just fly out somewhere. And as long as there's a gate that we come across in any of these worlds that we visit, then we can just boop right back at half the fuel cost. And there are a number of gates 
Let's bring up the gates here. So we already know of 20 gates. Now, granted, plenty of them are in the Cool Worlds, but look, we already have several of them out here in the outer reaches of the sector. So it stands to reason there might be at least a couple out here and maybe up here. So in the next several episodes, we are going to start exploring really heavily because one, I do know that there is a research station here in Alpha Whalo from a couple times that a quest has popped up saying we should go and find it and get paid for it. But I want to basically visit every star in the sector and learn everything we can and bring back all of the interesting goodies we can to really start building up our colonies even more than we already have, as well as colonizing the other planets in our system. But that will be for next episode and beyond. I hope you enjoyed this really long quest line that started just about after we started this series. And after we do some exploration, we will come back. There are a couple smaller side quests that we can do. And a couple of them are, actually, they're all pretty interesting and very full of lore. So I hope you're looking forward to that. And I hope you're looking forward to a lot of exploration and battles and never losing a ship or a fight. Right? Right. <laughs> anyway, everyone, as always, my name is Azim Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.